Welcome to Crypto OGs. Welcome to Crypto OGs. I have a very, very special announcement today and a very good episode with the one and only Mr. Christopher Louis Su, the CEO of Venom Foundation. How are you today, Louis? I'm beautiful. <laughs> you may not look, but I feel it. You feel it. Uh, we are, we're, the first of April, we are announcing a lot of stuff that's happening right now. The first week of April 2024, the market is moving fast. But in the space of crypto, yes, I know you've been in the industry for a long time, also with AI. So welcome to crypto, yes. Um You are one of the real OGs who has in all from entrepreneurship, AI, Bitcoin and everything that comes with it. So tell us about your experience so far and what inspired you to become a Star Venom Foundation. Well, <laughs> if you want to talk about OG, unfortunately, I go all the way back to 1979 when I was soldering joints on the back of black and white TVs. Oh, wow. And then in 1986, I invented Apple Computer Software Duplication System. Oh, wow. And then okay. between, you know, so I've, I've seen a lot of different things and I have a number of patents. When I saw Bitcoin, I was inspired quite dramatically. This was in 2016, but I didn't dare buy it until 2018, uh, until okay. I was pretty sure about where it was going. Okay. So, you know, if I then sort of jumped a gun, I fortunately have a lot of different contacts in uh, in and around Dubai and Abu Dhabi area that I built up over the years and somebody called me and they said hey there's a blockchain and they they need somebody to <laughs> they're going to make a blockchain but they would like somebody to help them out so I guess kind of by osmosis I got involved in the project over a number of years and then officially kicked in two years ago with Venom okay. Foundation. Officially I, I I remember I met a couple of the guys back in 2020, yeah, nearly a year and a half ago. I met them in an event. Um, they were talking about Venom Foundation. And yeah, you said it's been in the process for a long time. Um, but let's go straight to the point. Tell us a little bit about the goals of the Venom Foundation. And be, but before that, curious, where did the name start from? Where did the name come from? <laughs> so in the world today, you have a lot of stuff that's not going correct, it's especially in the world of finance. And money touches everything. So venom is the antidote to some of the poisonous things that are happening around us. You got to get bitten by the poison for it to cure you. Mm -hmm. But that's really where the name come from. It's that's the antidote. And, and what what are the main like? Tell us about the goals of Venom Foundation. I see, guys, you go listen in the top tier exchange. But what what are we looking for Venom this year, twenty twenty four, especially with the halving coming and also everybody expecting this bull run coming. So you are coming out in a good time. Okay, we lost you for ten seconds. Did you hear me? Yeah, you were asking about the halving. Yeah, I was asking what is what are the goals for Venom Foundation this year. And what is the roadmap? What is coming for you guys? We're blessed to be in a bull run because everything is green right now. So it's yeah. a good space to be in. But to answer <laughs> to answer your, your question about what are the goals and, and why did I get involved in Venom? Because there've already been a lot of different blockchains that are out there. The difference is I've been in industry now for nearly 40 years and I've built, founded companies and launched products blockchain unfortunately has not gone mass scale it has not been able to get adopted at a global level when i looked under the hood at what we have at venom it's like okay this protocol has got legs and it has something different which i can talk about in a second but the big picture is that venom is the blockchain that we can bring into developing and emerging markets which i will also explain why and we can scale it at a level that has not been possible before for other restrictions on those blockchain architectures that's the key reason mass adoption is possible well, i like that um look i've been within crypto nearly eight years now and i've seen the progress of the industry and yes we still not having mass adoption we still think like because a couple of our friends that mainly most of our friends are now in crypto we think everybody understand crypto but if you go out there and speak to somebody in a restaurant in a pub or in a park and you start to talk about DeFi solution ethereum solana people get a bit crazy so Louis, but you are you are leading a very competitive company in a very competitive world, right? Leading from uh, leading a foundation is uh, in this highly competitive and rapidly growing space is boss. It's a very privilege 
because we are early adopters, but it's also a big challenge. Can you see, can you share some of the key events that have helped shape Venom in what it is today? You're in a competitive space if you're essentially doing Me Too and, and doing the same as somebody else, but we're not. What we're doing is we're bringing to the party other things. So I talked about emerging markets and I talked about scalability. So we can do things that other blockchains can't. And this is really keeping the same transaction costs and the same speed as we bring on new users because of the architecture. We're, we also have a business approach to blockchain, which is pretty much traditional. We want our partners to make money and we want it to be used in practical applications. What we are doing is we're going to the spaces that need it the most. We have not elected to go to the USA or to the Western economies that are rich. They don't need it. They have got good rule of law. They've got pretty strong currencies. They've got banks that operate. They have employment. Developing and emerging markets are ideal targets because we can help them leapfrog and jump into a new paradigm of digital infrastructure. So we position ourselves as the guys who lay the pipes under the ground and put the roads down, and then you can build your applications on top of it. There's another benefit by going to these emerging markets is they have a wealth of assets which are untapped. And these assets can be financialized. You've heard Larry Fink and BlackRock talking about tokenization. You've yeah. seen Goldman Sachs going on about tokenization now for the past four years. But they're building castles in the sky because they're building wall garden tokenization products but they don't have the basic infrastructure in place. So for example, last week, I, I, I just come back from Uganda. In fact, not last week, it was yesterday. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if you saw the press announcement with His Highness, MBM Alpha Group in Dubai, Sheikh Al uh, Mohammed Al Maktoum. Uh -huh. We have signed an agreement with them to help bring blockchain technology to Uganda and other East African countries. So we spoke to a number of different departments and I was explaining how they should put the legal framework around this so it can be built and it can be scaled in the right way without hitting barriers all the time. Wow. Well, you just mentioned something that it got my attention. Obviously, Benon Foundation got my attention long time ago. But as I come from Colombia emerging market, actually one of the reasons why I joined crypto space, it was because the case of M-Pesa, you know, M-Pesa, um, the, the, the telecom company that was providing payment solution through SMS. I think it was in Kenya. And that's why it's part of the, I watched a bit about this. And then I was thinking about my people in Colombia, how people send remittances, you know, there's a, the, the unbanked people in Colombia, there's loads, believe it or not. So actually very good what you're doing with the Venom Foundation and especially with the with the um, uh, Royal Family of UAE. Very, very impressed and looking forward to see more. Now, uh, actually, uh, I met I met the uh, the CEO of M-Pesa, Sitwaya. Oh, did you? Amazing. Yeah, I met him in Kenya and uh, we spoke about how we could work on this and so there are things we can do but in Uganda it's at it's at a different level okay so this is this is one service operator one operator also uh, in Colombia my heart is in Colombia because I have got uh, Two of my quant, actually three of my quants from my artificial intelligence company are in Colombia, and uh, it's a beautiful country. So, and I really understand like the remittance uh, corridors. There's a lot of pain sending money home. People are just taking rent from uh, from sending the cash back. Yes, and uh, you know this will take time. It will change, but it will it's change. going to take some time. That, that, hopefully, that, we can contribute. That hopefully the Banner Foundation can contribute, and I would love to do something together. The reason also why I joined crypto because I was sending remittances to my mom back then. Oh, I was paying ten percent or fifteen percent. Wow. And I was I wasn't making much money. I, I, I was cleaning toilets, you know, being a barista as an immigrant. So sending 10, 15 percent is a lot of money, especially in Colombia. <laughs> um, yes, it is. Louis, now let's talk about something that is it make a company or make a technology very stable. So if you have to choose one among these three. Which one would you pick first and why? Security, transpar transparency or usability? Well, if it's like there's, there's real value on it now, the first one is security. It has to be. But actually, um, last year we built this uh, pilot in, um, it was actually in Bangladesh. Okay. And there they said, forget about security because it's a sandbox. We want usability first. So out of the three, the way I would order it is security, usability, and then transparency. Right. But, so, but you know, you need all three, right? You for success. All, yeah, you need all, you need all three or, or it won't work. It will work for a couple of months or years, but it won't be scalable. <laughs> so 
Talking about scalable and being a long time, you are, you've been a real OG in this space and who has seen it all, not only in the crypto space, also in AI. If you could highlight the top problem in the space, which is still uh, tends to exist, what would be? You mentioned uh, adoption, right? That was one. But what do you yeah. think, why, what, what is the main challenge that we have in this space right now? I understand that anybody who's in crypto, they're frustrated that this has not rolled out faster. Most people in crypto are very smart. First of all, you have to be good at math. You have to get your head around this new generation of tech. So that already puts you ahead of pretty much most people. And with intelligence, with these smartness comes, how come other people can't see what I'm seeing? Exactly. So it do, it isn't moving as fast as a lot of people would like it to move. However, if, you know, with my older hat on, if I look at this, I think we're moving at a pretty good pace already. Like I was so surprised to see how much institutional interest is has now come into the marketplace since we have the Bitcoin ETFs. Yeah. It's legitimized it quite significantly. So one, you're right. One of the problems is the adoption, but this this is happening. We need to make it more user friendly. There's no way a, a grandmother pick up a digital wallet and understand how to transfer from, from one to another. It's too technical. It's too complicated. One of the things that we've got at Venom is account abstraction. And this is the proof is in the pudding. Ethereum are releasing a protocol to try and get account abstraction and they understand it's missing. We have it natively in our blockchain because we are an asynchronous blockchain and it means we can separate the logic from the value. Account abstraction means we can have much more complicated, more complex financial structures around the value. But it also means we can disassociate the value from the logic and somebody can have a much easier interface. We can create a layer. So this is going to evolve over time and the user interfaces will get easier that would be one of the one of the things i would encourage builders to to build on Louis, you mentioned something that fascinates me is, is obviously with ai and we saw it recently the last year if you pick if you are somebody crypto you know or decentralized or DeFi, or trading or staking is way too complicated but now you're going to ask somebody to use chat gpt and start to type something for their social media or copywriting is so easy. When do you think we will see the same AI, especially ChatGPT, is just took the 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 world by storm? Everybody using it. I use it every day. People that I know into crypto is using it. When do you think we will have the same reaction within the Web3 or crypto space? Are we getting close? You mean that like that wow moment that we had that with wow uh, that everybody using? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. You know they're 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 diametrically opposed in terms of technology. AI is centralized mm -hmm. and blockchain, crypto, were decentralized. So yeah. we have this diametric opposition for one. I don't think we're going to have a wow moment with crypto. I think it's going to be gradually, then suddenly. And I okay. think the suddenly part is going to happen after this bull run. People are going to look backwards and they're going to go, wow, I remember when Bitcoin was $15,000 and I thought it was a Ponzi scheme. <laughs> and it's, you know, and they're going to say it's now $150,000. And then people are going to, so just the price action alone is going to ring alarm bells in people's head. And they're going to say, why did I ignore that? What's going on? I'm obviously missing something. And it's going to move really fast. Once the media get behind it, we've seen the media, you know, slam it for years. And now they're, they've taken their foot off the gas and they're like, yeah, okay, you know. So I think that all of these different stars will line up for us. And I'm pretty confident by the time we hit the next bull run, we're going to be in a completely different space. They won't be talking about crypto OGs any. Most of them, you know, it's just going to be normal. <laughs> yes, everybody, everybody will be an OG. <laughs> yeah. Louis, Benham Foundation is, is, is scaling up really fast. We've seen that you recently uh, released the, the token in the biggest exchange. Um, let's talk about the Benham Foundation. Let's talk about the team. You are, of course, the leader, the CEO leading this uh, conglomerate, this amazing technology. Can you explain a little bit more for people that is watching you or listening to you the first time? How the Benham Foundation, how it works with the team? Where is mostly the team uh, located? I know you guys are mainly in Abu Dhabi as well, one of my favorite cities in the world. Yes, it's uh, we're, we're located in Abu Dhabi. Um, we've got, like it's fluid, but we've got about 50 guys here in the office in Abu Dhabi. And then we've got about 200 different developers. A lot of them are gig software developers, but they're, they're you know they're part of our community and if you don't mind me punting an advert i would encourage developers and anybody who's looking to program please uh, come to us we 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 look for 
talent all the time. Um, yeah. But also just check the Venom website first because we're TVM. TVM so yeah. we have slight, we have differences to EVM. We're not EVM compatible, but we definitely would like to call out to developers who are listening and watching this. Please get in touch with us. Builders, please. There's a program, early bird program for people who now build on us. There's advantages. Anybody who wants to launch a meme coin, come to us now. It's a very good time because we've just launched. The opportunity is now. You go to some of these well-established blockchains, you have different types of liquidity because they're so well-established. Now is a great opportunity. So let, 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 me, let me touch two points. But before I say this, remember guys, no financial advice, do your research. Um, let me talk about the mint coins because me and a couple of friends, we launched last week a mint coin. And it was just as an experiment as a friend, $25 million market cap in 24 hours in Solana. Wow. It, it, well done. It yeah. It was what did you call it? It's called Cat Up Solana. And I was doing it while I was doing my hair transplant in Istanbul. <laughs> <laughs> and now let's talk about the, the, the serious part is the developing side. So I have a very good friend of mine. She is ex BNB, uh, the head of community lead, Maria Angel Garcia. We had an interview actually one year and she said, Andres, the, the main reason why I'm working hard with the community is to get more developers. Because if we get more developers on board, we get more solutions, more applications, more case of exactly. stack. The technology will get better and the usability will get better. So guys, if you are a young talent or, or you're looking to get into blockchain or Web3 development, you don't have to be an expert. If you are a good coder, you just jump on board and start to learn on the go. So yeah, I will, uh, in, in Louis looking for developers, I will uh, recommend you guys to check the Venom Foundation website and go for it. Like the time is right now, correct Louis? The time is right now. Right, I think now it's now it's a good late. time. There's no time like the present, as my mother would always say. Louis, and being in Abu Dhabi, I've I seen all the news, guys. You were very close uh, with the royal family. You are establishing a very well um, foundation in the region. Um, can you explain more to the audience? Like, how close are you with the with the UAE? What is the advantage? We know Dubai is, for example, is a hub for crypto and web three uh, with DMCC and other companies and Bar and yes. all of this. Yeah, explain the, why it's so important being in Abu Dhabi and close to the royal family. Well, so the the regime here is very supportive of new technologies. They have been really forward looking in terms of regulation. So digital asset regulation was straight off the bat, just like with Singapore, but I, th I think even uh, Dubai was ahead of them. And it's the same th deal for Abu Dhabi. Now, what has happened is like a magnet. It's attracted a lot of different talent here to the region. So, I mean, you can't walk outside without swinging a cat, without hitting a, a developer here. It's so, it's <laughs> <laughs> or a startup. There's lots of entrepreneurs starting up. I think if you count the number of startups, it's just mind blowing number of, of uh, startup companies that have, have come and built around here. So it's um, it's a great place for uh, to, to uh, be if you're in crypto and if you're in digital. I mean, it's not considered like a bad word. You know, when it, the way 10 years ago it was, oh, you're if you say crypto, it's like not good. But here it's not a problem, right? They, they understand it. And it. so and the support is from, you know, from the top, shall we say, all the way through municipalities, all the way down and you know, even the banking sector at first, they, they were reluctant, like just like every other banking sector, but they were, they were told, get on board. This is the way the ship is going. Right. So that's, uh, that's why we're here. It's, and uh, I would encourage people to, to look at it as a destination. There are many others, but here is quite good. And it has the it. added advantage of, uh, of being very tax friendly. Very tax friendly, a beautiful attraction, beautiful parks, nice beaches. It's a lot of nice stuff in, in Abu Dhabi. I love it there. Uh, I will show you next time I'll turn my camera on and I'll show you the beach right there. <laughs> <laughs> Louis, and obviously it's April. Um, it's a lot of happening for the crypto world. Is there the foundation, the Venom Foundation thing? Is it going to be in Paris Blockchain Week or are you going to be in Token 2049 so people can come and see you? Is anybody that anywhere that we people can come, developers, community builders, institutions? uh okay well, can come and visit you and see you yes is the answer i don't know the exact details the planners have got have you know they uh they're currently planning but we're going to be at the major events and we're going to be represented 
and okay. uh, always delighted to hear from anybody. Actually, I have an a, a invitation for Louis here on, on live. I'm going to invite to one of our events for OG Media Crypto Gs on the, on the 14th and 18th of April. He and his team, they can control the event. I'll tell you more detail later. Uh, Louis, we're, we're inviting a bunch of Crypto Gs, you know, and very good people in the industry, top exchanges, layer ones, institutions, uh, BAP, KOLs, and retail and obviously community builders, but this is what it make the, the crypto industry grow, right? So exactly. I, I send you my invitation right now. <laughs> it's accepted. Maybe may, maybe we do a second interview live in Dubai or Abu Dhabi. With it would be a pleasure. I would love to do that. So if anybody wants to get in contact with you guys, how they can connect with you, Telegram, Twitter, what is the best way to get in contact with you? So I'm pretty visible. You just type my name, Louis underscore, TSU and that's my Twitter account. Okay. Um, Twitter and also on LinkedIn, right? Also on LinkedIn. I have to admit though, I don't always go to LinkedIn. Yeah. It's you know, um, and if um and otherwise there's a uh, contact form on Venom Foundation site. I'm going to follow you right now. Look, Louis Su, there you go. Guys, just for the record, this is his account. You're very active. Yeah. Good. You, I like it. You can, you can see the pictures of uh, the various different uh, heads of department uh, um, in the presidential office at Uganda that we spoke to. Capital Markets, the Minister for Treasury. So it's a great way to connect with what's happening with Venom Foundation. And you're going to uh, Mr. Christopher Louis Su, the, the CEO. That's the best way. <laughs> Louis, thank you so much for being in the space of Crypto G's. I'm really looking forward to see you in all the events within the next few weeks. And you know, guys, if you want to give a, a thumbs up, follow up uh, Mr. Christopher Louis Su on Twitter or LinkedIn, that's the best way to connect with him. And I hope to see you and the Venom Foundation very soon. And to all the Crypto G's, I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you so much, Christopher. Thank you very much. See you bye around, bye. Andres. Bye-bye.